What's up, y'all? Jesse Warden here. Happy belated New Year. I know it's been uh, a little late between my videos, but it's been the holidays. I started a new job, trying to figure th everything out. I just wanted to cover today karma, formerly known as testacular. Now, real quick, if you're in a hurry and you want to know what is the value of karma, what does it really do? You basically go in terminal in your project. You say, in this case, runt runs a grunt task it runs up brings up a browser on a local server and runs multiple browsers if you'd like in this case Chrome and Safari the reason we do both is that JavaScript whether from a code perspective or a server perspective when you're doing Ajax calls and networking calls can be different it can execute differently on different platforms you want to do some real integration continuously continuous integration to see it working you, as you can see the reporting will say I have unit tests that failed on Safari but succeeded in Chrome and a final report or tally of how your application is doing. As you change and document files and write code and hit save, the watcher will detect those save, automatically rerun your unit tests and integration tests and give you a report at the bottom. So that is the quick and dirty version of what Karma does. And I want to get you set up. We're going to cover basically three things. Number one is going to get you down with the configuration. Some of those configuration variables are a little tricky. The documentation is clear, but it's version to certain versions of the documentation It changes. So I'm going to give you the basics so you can have at least a good firm foundation to figure things out. Number two is we're going to do our unit test and show it how it works with the unit testing. And number three, we're going to do our first integration test. So, so what is Karma? Karma is a tool set that runs on top of Grunt to do automated unit tests and automated integration tests. And it does it in such a way that it does it with different browsers and different reporting tools. So it's this platform that runs on top of Grunt, okay? And the point of it is that you can test your code in an actual real browser. And you can use PhantomJS as well, so you can emulate a lot of this stuff. You don't have to use a browser. The reason that's important is that running code in isolation in, is, is part of a good precept of unit testing, right? Taking code that sometimes is untestable, as you find out when you start learning unit testing, is that you have to have testable code before you can write good unit tests. Even if you're trying to do unit testing after the fact, you're not doing test-driven development where you write the test first, make it fail, then make it pass, and then repeat, right? So that concept of writing good unit tests and testable code is fantastic. Integration tests, where you take your code and you run it in a real browser, things are different. A lot of very core precepts, such as array.sort, which we'll show today, it's very important to run this in a variety of different browsers to make sure that it works from that perspective. I'm not going to cover the mobile aspect. I'm just going to cover desktop for today because that's easiest, and that's what I'm recording on. That should give you an idea, okay? That's, that's from the implementation perspective, from doing unit testing, integration testing, and actually having your code run in an actual browser scenario, whether it's a unit test to test a sorting algorithm, or whether it's a true integration test to actually have your service go and hit a real web server, a real local dev server, whatever, right? That's fantastic. But from a workflow perspective, Grunt, Watches, and Karma really form a, a basic pedestal foundation for just about anything else you add on top. So I had an interview question from a client and they said, what are some of the first Grunt plugins or Gulp plugins that you install? For me, it is Karma. Karma is really the firm foundation that kind of launches everything else from a workflow perspective. So I'm going to get you set up. Then we're going to do a unit test to show you how the browser integration can work from that perspective. And then we're going to go do an integration test. You can use whatever you want. You can use Mocha, Jasmine, doesn't matter. But the point is I'm going to show you this workflow in play and how you can start coding. We're also going to use WebStorm. So instead of actually using Sublime, which is Sublime Ninja Skills, I'm going to use WebStorm, which is made by the company called IntelliJ. IntelliJ is their basically big, massive editor. WebStorm is a, kind of a custom build of that specifically for web development. First thing you need to do, if you're curious, is if you go to Karma on the web, you will see the spectacular test runner, hence why they used to call it testacular. Karma has all the intro config information you need to know. So if you're looking at this video, have hard problems reading something, I haven't posted the code to GitHub yet, then you can go here and find out all the information you need to know. Most of this is installed by Grunt. You hopefully should never have to go here. Most of your time will probably be spent writing unit tests. Hopefully you only have to configure this and tweak this once, okay? You might turn certain browsers on and off when you first get started, get comfortable with your workflow, that's okay. But for the most part, you shouldn't only really ever have to refer to this website. Only go there unless you're looking for workflows. First thing you need to know is you gotta have this 
NPM and Bauer and Grunt stuff already installed. If you don't, go check out my other video, which is really long and involved and talks about a crash course, even though it's long and involved. <laughs> So it does both, okay? I'm assuming you already have all that stuff installed. So I'm assuming you install Grunt or whatever else, but I'll do it again. So we're gonna do the NPM init because we wanna set up a project with Node Package Manager, okay? Simple Karma, sounds great. Version, description, whatever, whatever, whatever. So if you're not aware, NPM init basically sets up your project with a package.json init. And this is one of the first things you do. I always do MIT, unless it's for a client, obviously. Yes, that's fantastic. Next up, we do an npm install Bower. Again, Bower is strictly for client libraries as opposed to Node. You use both, npm and Bower, doesn't matter. Install that guy, get him set up. Ready, rock the mic. Bower install grunt. Actually, before we do that, let's do a Bower init. Simple Karma, version, description, main, keywords, authors, license, homepage. Yes. 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 Good to go. Funky Comedia. Next up, Bauer install Grunt. Get that Grunt going. I'm assuming you've already done the Grunt CLI. You have It's installed globally, so your terminal, if you're on a Mac or whatever you do on PC, you can actually run all this stuff from your terminal so you don't have to you know, do aliases in your profile and all that other terminal stuff that I don't understand. All right, so we have our package.json. Let's node know what we need to have it install. These are the files that you check into source control. The others are not. Karma is the same way. If you have your package.json for node, you have your bower.json for bower, then it should be able to install all the libraries you need. The only thing you're missing is a grunt file and a couple of source files to get yourself started. So let's make some source files and index.html and some JavaScript to get our project good to go. We're gonna do a simple sorting algorithm. Then we're gonna make our grunt file to set up grunt and get it set up with Karma. All right, we're gonna launch WebStorm. I already have a project previously opened. So as you can see, we already got our package, JSON, everything we need there. Thank you, I'm good, JetBrains. Peace out. Our Bower JSON sets up all our client side libraries, right? Some of the things that we need. All our components are in Bower node. You do not check those in. Those will have things for Karma. It'll have Karma. Things that Karma needs to support itself. So they're all there. So the only thing, two files we check in are Bower.json. So first, let's make some source code, some actual stuff that we need to test and run. So make a source directory. I'm gonna shove an index.html in there. And I'm gonna make a new JavaScript file. We're gonna call it index.js. Cool. That's good to go, funky comedina. That Medina man. All right, we'll write some simple JavaScript. What is happening, home slice? Karma man, dude. Inside of our head, we're gonna link that script in. Call it index.js. Again, Jesse Warden's cardinal rule for software development, whether you're doing gaming or applications or startups or enterprise code, doesn't matter. Thing you need to do most and most often is to get something on the screen compiling. In JavaScript's case, that means not throwing explosions, right? Or explosions that you don't, you know, unknown about. So as you can see, we have what is happening at Home Slice. The console's working, the HTML page is working. Fantastic. Everything's good to go. Next up, let's create some unit tests and make sure that, okay, before we start writing some serious code here, let's get a firm foundation in which we can work across. So let's call it tests. So test for me is a euphemism for unit tests. Every other thing handles it differently. It could be test, test suites. In Jasmine's case, it can be specs, right? It's up to you. I'm just gonna call it test because that's where I like to put my unit tests. Separate folder, right? Different places. Whether you're using Browserify or Require, I don't care. The point is that you need to organize your code because it will grow in size. I'm not talking about 50 files, I'm talking about thousands, okay? So, gotta start good and start early and constantly iterate and make sure it's good to go. Let's make a new JavaScript file. We're gonna call this basic spec. I'm gonna copy pasta code in there. We got a simple test, okay? So describe is the keyword that you utilize with Jasmine when you're describing your test. I have a simple test and it is in fact a hello world, right? So we're gonna do a simple hello world to verify that A is a string that we just typed in, okay? 
that's what it is. Now you'll notice WebStorm's all about, I don't know what this 2B is, I don't know where it is. Well, the fun things with JavaScript is it's global, we haven't defined it yet, but that's okay. Simple unit test, this should be turned true, and we should make sure now Jasmine that in fact works. Where's Jasmine? Did we install it? No, so let's install Jasmine with grunts. How does that exactly work? Is that when you install Karma, it will install its dependencies. Jasmine is included in that because Jasmine is part of the plugin. So it already defines its dependency. Now, if you want to install it yourself, that's fine too. You may use it for other places. You might not use it with Karma, that's okay. For that to work, you have to define a grunt file. So let's define a file, a grunt file.js, basically. Copy, pasta, coding. Normal grunt files are tons of JSON. Now you can delegate some of these JSONs out to external config files for their areas of context and interest. In our case, we're gonna outsource the Karma configuration, because it tends to be long as well, to a separate file. So as you can see down here, we have our config file for the unit testing of Karma in an external JS file, which we'll create. The only plugin we have is Grunt Karma, okay? Now I'm not gonna install it, I'm gonna show you the error that'll happen, because I wanna show you these errors, so when you see me, you go, I don't know what's going on, well, we'll work through it, okay? It, debugging errors is what most tutorials don't really show you and I get really frustrated because then I have to go stack overflow. I want to show you exploding your face. You, you feel calm in the face of strong adversity of terminals saying that you're horrible and life is bad and your code isn't going to compile and you're like, look, I'm a developer. I can take this. I'm going to win. That's what you should be prepared to do is to win every day. So Grunt Karma, that's the only plugin. Our default task, when you type in Grunt into the terminal, it's gonna default to run the Karma task. The Karma task runs Karma, Testacular, whatever, with the external config file. What is this external config file? Well, this is where Karma gets interesting. Let's show you that. We're gonna make our last file on the root directory. It's a karma.conf.js. Conf is a slang abbreviation euphemism for configuration. I'm not a big fan of those in programming. I don't like to think. I like to just read stuff, immediately know, because I have a large enough cognitive load writing all this co code, competing with PhDs, blah, blah, blah. If you're familiar, it's got the module exports pattern. This is very similar to any other node or CommonJS way of doing things. This is all the configuration for Karma. Rather than putting all of this in the grunt file, we put it in an external file to make it manageable. It's completely unmanageable. We like to pretend it's manageable. A base path, base path, I'm gonna go through each one of these settings, describe what they are and some of the pitfalls that I ran into. The base path is very similar to any other module system that you utilize, whether it's Browsify or Require, doesn't matter. The point is base path is where am I running? So I know when you ask for a file, I know in relative to what. Since we put karma conf js in the root directory, it's very simple, right here. <laughs> right now, that boy slim style. Frameworks to utilize. We're just gonna use, utilize Jasmine. You can utilize Require, whatever else. Karma has a lot of good support and plugins for existing frameworks. Some are plugins, some are built in. Require JS, for example, whatever else. It knows how to handle that. And the reason this is important is this files thing. Now, you'll read some documentation that says the order files isn't important. Incorrect. In fact, it differs for different versions where things should go, as I found out through fun times. Files basically load all your files in a generated page. Karma runs on its kind of own local web server from Node, I believe. So these files will actually load up and code gen the script tags for you, whether you're using a real browser, such as Chrome, or if you're using PhantomJS, which emulates the browser. Whatever you're using doesn't matter. Karma is going to generate this for you. So it's important that you define what files it needs to include. Obviously the first is I need the Bower components or whatever you call Bower, right? I need all my library files. So any folder or whatever with a JS file needs to be included. Now, sometimes you may need CSS or any other support files. In our case, we just need any library files first. My whole platform of JavaScript development is built on libraries, please include those. Number two, I need my source code. So I have my source code always put in SRC. So anything in there that has a .js file in any folder or non subfolder, include it. Number two, spec. Anything in my unit tests, I call it tests, unit test folder that has a suffix of something something spec JS with a capital S, because I follow camel case spelling. You need to include that so I can do my unit tests, in this case, Jasmine. So since you have my libraries, you have my source code and my unit test, good to go. This includes subfolders. So I specifically did this, you don't have to, just to differentiate between the ones at the top and the ones below. Now you'll notice that this include false. That means if you're using something like require or something else, don't define the script tag for me. I'll do that. I want you to put the file there 
but all actually loaded. So if the file is actually including your local directory or whatever else you're building, fantastic, but let me load it. So I'm going to leave it to false to show you what happens when you get an error. Exclude. So let's say you inherited a project and files, you know, you don't really have an easy way of moving things without breaking things, it's spaghetti code, or it's just hard to modify. That's fine. Maybe it's an older code base you inherited. They didn't make the greatest decisions or they did, but it's too time consuming because you're on deadlines. You can exclude those files to not negatively affect your browser. I'm lucky counting my blessings. I'm starting from scratch. Don't have that problem. So we're going to leave exclude empty reporters. So, I don't really like any of the reporters. <laughs> like progress is okay. It gives you colors and it shows you, you know, the progress of things going on in the terminal. So it's good, but it's not as pretty as some of the browser based ones, which have all kinds of graphics and stuff like that. So progress is the default that I suggest. It runs right in the terminal, gives you nice little colors, tells you if things worked or not. And that's really all you need to know as you're doing your day to day, you know, coding, right? Again, this runs in the background. You code during the day in a continuous integration style. So it's helpful, but it's not, you know, over in your face kind of stuff. For the record, JUnit's pretty cool in terms of the reports that it generates. You can import those into existing Jenkins or Cruise Control, whatever else reporting things that you do. Maybe you're doing code coverage tools over time. This is a wonderful, wonderful output way of doing that. As you can see, as many developers coding, you get a lots of data, if that's your thing. Port doesn't matter, whatever it runs on a local server port, no one cares. Colors, I like colors. I like to see colors in my terminal. I like to see green, good, red, bad, danger. That's why I have colors turned on. Log level, if you're having explosions, set it to something lower like log or debug. So anytime something explodes in your terminal, you can see it and hopefully Google Stack Overflow for why am I seeing these errors in grunt? I don't understand. Karma is not working, help me. Auto watch, most important setting. There are two important settings you need to know about to do the workflow that I suggest. Auto watch true means it'll set up a normal watcher. If you're not familiar, watchers are, they watch your code base and anytime your code base changes, maybe you edit a CSS file to regenerate the less, you know, in CSS from that. If you're doing JavaScript, it'll rerun unit test. In this case, Karma will rerun everything. So it's important to set auto watch to true. That's the first one. We'll get back to the other one. Browser. So browsers by default will launch a browser window and run the test in each browser window. This is the whole point of integration test, right? Actually running your code in a different browser runtime to verify they run mostly the same. In this case, JavaScript. The browser incompatibilities are still there. You can define the versions. So in our case, we'd say Chrome and Firefox, right? In order to launch those two browsers and actually run it. Now you'll notice this last one, Chrome without security. The documentation for this sucked. I was totally burnt by this, spent plenty of hours. It made no bloody sense. So if you are a client developer, you're probably aware that loading local files or hitting local hosts will explode. Chrome will go, something cross to mean blah it's like not helpful at all there makes no sense and you have to go to stack overflow if you're on you know another browser is something different the point is that the browser will not allow you to load from files so when you say file colon slash slash right forward slash instead of http you get all kinds of security errors because they don't want to load local files and send them the internet right security risk or cross site domain thing i get it but i'm a developer i'm coding locally it's going to work on a server. I'm not deploying a local server. Can I please, you know, be productive today? Is that okay with you? You know, the whole HTML5 platform, is that cool? What you do is you say, hey, Chrome, just turn it off so I can code. Thank you. So you be, define these custom launchers. All they really are is say, hey, launch Chrome, right? Base was the base browser. Launch Chrome and pass it these flags. You can do the same with Firefox, Opera, whatever else. The point here is that once you give it a name, whatever you, whatever you make up, Chrome without security, you can then paste that in the browsers and it'll launch that instead. When you're doing true integration tests, very important to know. I always do this one. One other thing to note about that too is that if you already have a copy of Chrome open, it'll actually launch another proof file of Chrome in a completely separate instance. So it looks like the Chrome logo, but it's a different profile, meaning that that browser runs without security and your normal browser runs with security. This is important because if you only if you don't have Chrome open, it'll just open Chrome with security disabled and you can surf the web with this on very, very bad. So just keep in mind, Chrome should already be open before you run this if you're on a Mac. I don't know what it does on a PC. Capture timeout is if you have some unit tests, let's say you're doing some integration tests with some legacy servers and they are really long. Let's say it's you know, government servers or something. It's just really legacy. Maybe it's still running Fortran, which has a lot of layers to go from Java to get it to a web context. Whatever that is, you don't want your window to block forever because then your terminal will stop running your test as you save your code. It'll be still waiting for that test you, you tested this morning. 
So it has a timeout to basically give up and keep going, okay? So that's very important. Lastly, so we talked about the two most important configurations in your Karma. Single run is the second. Single run means launch the test and close the browser. Okay, you don't want it to do that. We want continuous integration mode, right? So what I, don't, what I mean by continuous integration is not, you know, do the test, do the integration test, do the JS hinting and the linting, check in the code to get Premiere commit hooks, blah, 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 deploy, see dev. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about as you code throughout the day, you can verify that the things you are changing on your files are generally creating lots of green or creating lots of red. And maybe you're just not aware, you haven't looked in a while. So it'll constantly run throughout the day with this auto watch set to true up here. It'll set that to true so you can see it's happening, okay? So those are the two things that you need to know about from a Karma configuration perspective. So let's run this guy and show you what happens. We will go to Grunt. Now, if you run Grunt without any plugins or you don't have Grunt installed, it'll yell at you from this case. In this case, we don't actually have Grunt installed. Another way to verify is you can actually just install it via Node. Say save dev, because I only am using Grunt in a development context. I don't, it's a dev dependency, right? It's a dev dependency, I'm not actually utilizing it for production. So when we try it again and we say, okay, grunt, run the grunt, which looks in your local directory for a grunt file and runs that guy, it'll look for karma, cool. So when you see this error, it says karma not found because it doesn't know what karma is. So let's install it. We'll go to Bower search karma just to verify it actually exists. And as you can see, it's right there. This nanakatat, good stuff. So we'll say Bower install karma. Save dev, because again, Karma is not used for production code deployment libraries. It's only for development. So in your Bower JSON file, it'll say, hey, this is only for development. We don't actually need to deploy this to production code. So install it, say save. Now we'll go, okay, grunt. Again, notice how all the errors, I'm working through them with it. Now it still can't find Karma install, grunt Karma. This particular grunt Karma module is actually a plugin for grunt. So grunt doesn't include that. So you can install that. We're gonna install that via Node just because it's a Grunt related thing. And I like to do Grunt things using Node. It's just a habit because most Grunt plugins are by Node people. They're not like, they kind of border on client side. npm install Grunt Karma. Again, save dev because it's a locally deployed plugin. Now sometimes you'll get permission errors when you try to install things. It's trying to modify your system. It might not work. We're lucky now because I've already done sudo in another context. So I don't have that problem. If you're on a PC, completely different issue. <laughs> now, we've had four errors, let's try again. Grunt. Fantastic, now we have an error config. Now, as you can see, I misspelled karma to just be karm, so it can't find the actual configuration file. So in this case, this error, error message actually is pretty good. Exception to the rule, say karma. Now you said refactor web webstorm is a little dangerous for refactoring for some files that actually rename things you weren't aware it requires the worst. So just be aware the refactor stuff is fantastic. Instead of doing a find and replace, it's pretty smart about knowing how your project is set it up and refactoring things. Configuration files, really nice feature. Number five, five errors. Ta-da! Bunch of green. Now you'll notice since I didn't do single run, this Chrome instance will start up and be loaded up here. It's running from a local web server on the port I specified with a unique ID. Now notice it's gonna say, stability will, security will suffer, er. You mean I actually can be productive. That's what you really mean, Google, got it. So close that, ignore that. It'll tell you what version of Karma is running in green. Now you're not really concerned about this window. This window is just here to run your code in a Chrome context. You can do the same thing with Firefox. So for example, if I say control C on the terminal, right? It'll close it. And I go, okay, let's run Chrome. Let's also run Firefox. No, you know what? Let's run Safari. No, let's run Firefox. And Safari. Save. Run it again. You can see it's running all of them. Right, side by side. Cool, so I got multiple browsers testing my code in different run times, right? This is important for integration tests. Now you'll notice it didn't run Safari. Now why is that? If you'll notice some browsers, you actually have to install a specific launcher for that and that's okay. The, the docs for Karma are pretty good. Some of the plugins are 
included. If you're using newer versions of Karma, a lot of the, the newer versions will actually bake some of the older plugins in. So if you inherit a project which has a plugin that you can't find info for, it's out of date, it's a lot of times the Karma guys have included in. So just be aware that the config files will be different when you look online to see how they launch their browsers. Because browsers change over time too, and some of the plugins don't update to that, okay? So just be aware of that. Chromium, not Chrome, is a perfect example of that. So let's take out these guys, because I don't care about these guys. I want to show you the normal workflow that you're doing, okay? We're going to make two unit tests to show you the normal workflow. You've got Karma set up. You've got all your configuration files ready to go. You've decided on using Chrome without security for your primary testing runtime before you do some hardcore integration tests. So what does that really mean? What does this do? What is the workflow? Hopefully, beyond adding a browser, that's it. You don't have to do anything else but start coding. Start coding unit tests, start coding integration tests, or just regular code, whatever it is you do. In our case, we're going to set up our unit tests. So you'll notice that we have executed zero of zero tests. So it didn't run the basic unit test that we have. Why is that? Well, you'll notice this basic spec is not using required, it's not using browser, it's not using anything in there. So let's go back to our karma and say true. We want to include these files and script tags. We're not using required, just include all the code we need. And Notice how even though it's a watch, I changed the configuration. So I want Karma to launch at this configuration. I'll have to close it. And I also have to resize the browser, which is annoying. There we go. Now, you can see I'll start getting some errors. Okay, In this case, I'll get some reference errors for particular modules not being defined. We don't want to include the actual library files because in the, the library files will get confused being included in there. This includes dev dependencies. So that's why you set usually libraries to false. Okay? So we'll close it again, launch it again. And as you can see, it ran my base code, right? In this case, what is happening home slice, that's the console log that we had, which will output to your node terminal window. In this case, the local web server we've created for Karma. We've got executed one of one, okay? And as I accidentally saved the file, it ran it again. So let's, uh, let's add another unit test here. Let's say B is true because it's true, man. Okay, that's our other assumption here. So we'll say bar B is true. I expect B to be true. Hit save and watch the bottom left. Ta-da, we now have two of two successfully executed unit tests. Fantastic, so as you go about your day, modifying libraries that these unit tests are hopefully testing, you will know if you broke them or not. You'll see these green things. So if we do the true TDD, of e is not a number and we say okay let's go e is null expect e to be one Hit save one of them failed and it'll do its best to give you the stack trace of where the error occurred javascript is horrible at this but it's getting better in this case you'll see expected null to be one fantastic so the expectation of the unit test failed we want it to fail now we want to fix it in true tdd fashion hit save boom done so as you can see this is running throughout the day in a chrome runtime now why is chrome important the defining point of why you run your jasmine unit test in a karma scenario to actually do testing in a browser context because the different browser runtimes are different <laughs> That's why they're called different browser runtimes. Duh, thanks for that, Jesse, Captain Obvious. So your first question is, okay, we now have unit testing set up in place, but why would I use that? What is the real value of actually doing these integration tests? I'm not, I'm not really getting it from a standpoint, I get how I watch and I run my Jasmine in a convenient way versus having to refresh the page, but I could do that with Jasmine anyway with my own Grunt plugin. Let's show you the browser differences in action, something really simple. So we're gonna just do a simple array sort. So let's take our function and call it array sort. It takes an arbitrary array, a list, whatever, and sorts that. A, item A, and you have item B, okay? We're gonna return item A is greater than B. If item A is greater than B, it'll return true. In this case, one because this is a feature of JavaScript. If it returns false, it'll return false. In this case, zero, because that's also a feature of JavaScript. What if it's neither? It returns null, or it's not really intentionally returning negative one. This is a very normal way of doing sorts. Functional programmers assume default value returns, which is fine, 
But those assumptions of default value returns are different across browsers in different versions of browsers, okay? We're not even covering versions of browsers <laughs> in Karma, just a browser as it stands installed on your machine. Who knows what version of Chrome you're running today versus tomorrow versus the end of the day now that everything auto updates. So yes, you can be coding throughout the day and you'll see red when you weren't seeing it all day and the code didn't change, but that's just how development works. So let's take a normal, simple example. Take our list of numbers, okay? We'll say three, one, four, two, five. So it's one, two, three, four, five in some weird arbitrary order. So we'll say console.log, the list of numbers. Then we'll say array sort. Our customer rate sort thing, man. List of numbers. Then we'll say console log list of numbers after we have sorted it. We'll refresh, and as you can see, in Chrome, it sorts it as you would expect, right? Expects it one to D for five. A is, is greater than B, no false, so it puts it in order of operations. So this index.js is going to return our array sort function on global, okay? It's going to be a window.global, so we don't have to define it, okay? It's going to be included in our file. And if it's not, then you have a configuration error, which is good. You need to find those early. So let's create our sorting algorithm. Array sort is supposed to be in a certain order. So we have our array, again, which is our normal list, which is a, in this case going to be a fixture. It's a hard-coded piece of data in our test. I'm not using mocks, or maybe it is a mock. Then we're going to run our array sort which changes the data. So it's actually a, an operator function known as an operator. We expect the first item, because that's all we really care about. We're not gonna iterate through each one. We, we know if the first item is wrong, then something really bad happened. So we're gonna say expect list item zero to be, to be equal to 100%. Okay, no truthy, falsy. We wanna know it must be one. We run our new integration test. You can see the log, it outputs to that, okay? So that's what it's outputting from Chrome running in a local server on our Karma server. Fantastic, good to go. So let's go to our basic Karma Conf. Hopefully you should never have to do this again, but let's just say we're, you're still trying to figure out your setup. That's fine. We're gonna run it with NPM Saf Karma Safari Launcher. We can close it and say NPM install Karma Safari Launcher, same dev. It'll go install the package, install it locally, so it's on your machine, or in this case, in your directory, if you're not installing it globally, okay? Then you can actually launch that particular plugin. So let's run Safari as normal. Run Grunt, it'll run both browsers, and as you can see, one failed. <laughs> so the unit test failed. Now you'll notice it succeeded in Chrome, but failed in Safari. So this is kind of the point of integration testing is that all your code's good, it passed unit tests, the unit tests are legit. These libraries are from trusted sources, they've worked for other people, but suddenly you're running your code and you said, well, I'm getting an error. How is this possible? How did my unit test fail? Well, this is an integration test, the test running in a different runtime and it exposes those errors. Now, array.sort is the tip of the iceberg. There are a lot of other minor things that form the crux of some of these libraries that will fail. And again, this is why you do it. It's even more fun when you bring IE into the context. It's a little harder for Mac. I think it's called Triton, Triton JS or whatever, or Trifle, which emulates IE for kind of like Phantom JS. So you don't actually have to have IE on your machine. You can emulate it with different versions, but I don't know how much of the JavaScript implementation they've done as well as how much backwards compatibility. So again, it's important to do real world testing. This gets even more fun when you wire this up to device browsers, which is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but it gives you a point of like, okay, I can test my browsers in different browsers, different runtimes. I can test the iOS browser, the iOS Chrome, right? All these contexts that work differently. Azure writing normal code throughout the day. That is Karma from a high level perspective. Elevator pitch is it is a testing platform for doing integration and unit testing and a continuous integration style on top of Node and Bower and Grunt, right? That's really what the proposition is for. Don't have to use Bower, you can just use Node and Grunt. Point of uh, unit testing from Karma rather than Jasmine is that you can run it in many browsers, not just one. You don't have to manually refresh it, it does it auto. The whole concept of launching it <clears throat> from a single configuration file with different plugins from require whatever else, it's basically set up for any type of project. So you don't have to manually set up that Jasmine you know, library and everything else is all built in, the framework's ready for ready to go. That when you're doing GUI testing and any other, whether it's server integration, 
from Ajax APIs to everything to simple read at source. As you can see, we have all these browsers running and Karma will continually test in those browsers and actually do real integration testing on the various runtimes, various browsers that it does. Oh, it's a great team tool. I hope this helps you get up to speed. And if you got any questions, hit me up at jesse, jessewarden.com. You can also hit me on my blog, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google Plus. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, leave a comment. I can take it. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this was helpful.